to um, item nine, and that's the city centre master plan refresh. The going out to 2040, and uh, welcome to Luda Campbell Reid, GM at the Auckland Design Office, and also from the Auckland Design Office. Principal Urban Designer George Weeks and Tim Fitzpatrick, who's the manager of the City Centre Design uh, Group, the, in the office there. And we workshop this one, members, on the 1st of November. We have our paper before us today. And um, look, I think we'll go through the presentation and then we'll put up the motions because um, it'll be a lot clearer. Now, I understand, Ludo, do you want to introduce or is it George? Ludo's going to introduce and kick things off. Ludo. Yeah, kia ora and tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, uh, talo falafa. Um, good morning everybody and um, it's great to be here. Um, Mr Chair, um, Mayor Phil, uh, councillors, local board members um, and IMSB board members, um, you've got a busy day ahead of you. We're going to be really quick and, and to the point. Uh, George is alongside me, um, who's going to take us through the main presentation. Tim Fitzpatrick, who leads the City Centre Master Plan team, is going to be uh, here to help you with uh, questions and answers as we move through. I'm just going to set the scene. And um, we're here to seek your endorsement for the following. Um, firstly, to approve the uh, updating of the digitising of the 2012 Auckland City Centre Master Plan and Waterfront Plan. And secondly, to approve the development of a new master plan content for uh, 2019, which is going to cover um, three key uh, pieces of work. As you've heard today, the Grafton Gully Boulevard, uh, Maori outcomes, and the concept access for everyone. And uh, we've heard a lot about that already today. We're assuming, councillors, that you've, you've all read the report and are aware of, of what's been said. Um, I also talk about being very familiar with the contents. We've had several workshops uh, with yourselves over the last few months, and uh, those include workshops on the uh, downtown, midtown implementation programs uh, alongside our colleagues at the DPO and Auckland Transport. Uh, we've also had workshops with the Watamata local board. Uh, Pippa was here earlier today. Uh, we've also had sessions with the city centre waterfront chief executives group and uh, an AT's executive team. So we've done a lot of due diligence uh, around that. Um, all are supportive of progressing the work and today is about taking this conversation uh, to Aucklanders. So today we just want to provide you with a very high level overview of the planned work, um, but with a very specific and deliberate focus on the concept uh, we've talked about today, uh, we're calling access for everyone. So George is going to take us through this work and um, I'll sort of uh, come at the end again. So George, okay, over to you. Thank you, Ludo. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to talk about our plan for updating the city centre vision to 2040. The, the Auckland plan, as we know, has been recently redesigned into a digital format, and we're wanting to do the same with the city centre master plan. It's easier to keep a digital document up to date with rolling <coughs> updates while retaining the overall vision. Um, this image here is an indicative timeline to suggest how rolling updates work. So look, it's got three rows. Look at the top row. Auckland city centre is changing fast and background data, like population, changes fast as well. And with a digital plan, we can update the data sets that underlie, uh, that underlie the master plan as they change. And this can happen quite frequently. In the middle row are rolling updates. These are new or updated programs to reflect needs and priorities. These would be, these would be signed off by a planning committee and would happen ooh, about every year or so. We saw this last year with the downtown and midtown programs. And I'm going to go into more detail on some of these in a moment. And underlying all of these is a high level strategic vision for the future of the city centre, which again would go through a periodic formal adoption process with elected members. So what we have here is um, the ability to respond to changing data, um, add regular work programs as necessary and deliver an underlying vision for the city centre. And uh, I'm going to be talking about three of the rolling updates in a moment. 
the wider digitization process will start more next year and we'd like when, we'd, when we look forward to talking to you about it next year. So, um, looking to the middle row, what can I tell you about this new content? Well, all of, all of the material I'm, I'm about to suggest is about coordinating existing and future programs from the Auckland Council family and central government. And as Luda mentioned, we've been to plenty of presentations, workshops, and other meetings over the past few months. The first of the three is Maori outcomes. Auckland is the world's largest Maori city, and it's time to step up from our progress in Maori design to look at a citywide outcomes vision that provides space for Te Ao Māori to flourish mm -hmm. as an integral and integrated part of Auckland city centre. We, help, we are helping the Mana Whenua Kaitiaki Forum to produce an outcomes plan. Once this vision document is complete, we will negotiate what content from the outcomes plan can be included into the city centre master plan. Secondly, we have Grafton Gully Boulevard concept, and this examines the corridor between the port and the motorway, as well as the surrounding land holdings. It addresses the aims shown on the left-hand side of this slide, integrating existing plans into a coherent vision for the most underdeveloped edge of Auckland city centre. The Grafton Gully Boulevard concept is for the corridor to work better for freight movement between the port and the motorway, but also to work for general traffic, for public transport, for cycling and walking, and also for land development and land value capture. This concept integrates the port's master plan, the forthcoming Parnell plan, regional rail planning, and the private proposal to out reopen Albert Park tunnels and all of these will help integrate transport and land use and develop the corridor. And we look forward to talking to you all about this next year. And the third area, which I'm going to talk about a bit more, is Queen Street, which, as we know, is due to be transformed with light rail, which, I mean, transforming Queen Street like this is a major challenge to how the city centre works. But also, it's an opportunity to think about how the city centre works, to think about city centre access holistically. Light rail will bring ooh, up to about 10,000 people per hour into the city centre and transform Queen Street, how it looks and how it works. But we're not just talking about Queen Street itself. This transformation will affect the street network around Queen Street. We've got a, We've got um, changes to how people get around and through the heart of Auckland. And this is not even the only transformation for city centre streets. We've got a linear park, uh, a Key Street Boulevard, Wellesley Street Bus Boulevard, a new city rail link, and real estate development running at over a billion dollars per year. This all puts pressure on the road network, which still at the same time has to support the daily operations of 120,000 or so employees, 50,000 residents, and 11,000 businesses. Street space is limited, but the demands for street space are practically infinite. We need to think more efficient, we need to use our streets more efficiently and provide access to the city, no matter what's going on, and essentially deliver a city centre that we want. So, how do we keep the city's heart beating and provide? access for everyone. I'd like to spend the next five minutes explaining the concept to you. Access for everyone is a future movement concept. It allocates private transport in Auckland city centre into a series of zones. Everyone is able to get into and out of a zone by a specific route. Auckland's urban motorway system, by any international standard, is superb. So we, ha so we generally provide access to the zones from the motorway network. Or for people who aren't going to the city centre, the motorway box diverts people around the edge. People come into a zone and leave it the same way. Cars cannot cross the zone boundaries. Special vehicles can, like emergency services. 
servicing or deliveries, rubbish removal, critical business trips, existing access to buildings, people with specific mobility requirements. This is part of a wider series of changes. We're spending billions of dollars on public transport in Auckland, li linking the city centre to the region. Over the next decade, public transport capacity will increase by uh, up to uh, about 370%, with rail, light rail, buses and ferries bringing tens of thousands of people into the city. Access for everyone prioritises free movement between zones for trains, buses and light rail vehicles. And by prioritising public transport, more people are able to get to and get around the city centre. With electric buses, electric light rails and train, we can make city centre transport emissions free, as per the Mayor's C40 declaration, and deliver the cleanest air of any major city worldwide. But what about goods and deliveries? We, we, we need these to keep the city centre running. Under the Access for Everyone concept, during the day, you have plentiful loading areas and loading bays, consolidation centres and delivery lockers in each zone. Auckland Transport is already trialling last mile e-bike uh, consolidation and delivery, and this works for moving zones across, moving goods across zones during the day. At night time, when the streets are less busy, the zone boundaries are open for goods vehicles, for freight that's more efficient to move with a larger vehicle. And fundamentally, the, the heart of the Queen Street Valley becomes the most accessible place in the whole of New Zealand. It really prioritises people using the space. Um, by removing the discretionary layer of car traffic, you free up street space for other functions. As a strategic vision, it coordinates and de-risks interventions. For light rail, it allows us to prepare the streets for light rail construction years before it's actually built, minimising disruption to business. Looking forward, we are engaging with Auckland Transport, Panuku, Waitamata Local Board, Heart of the City, the City Centre Residence Group and others to understand user needs and develop the Access for Everyone concept further. And we look forward to working with you. So thank you very much for listening, and I'm going to hand over to Ludo to, to finish. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Um, this, is a, this is a complicated uh, process and uh, a sort of a concept. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in, as we go through questions. But um, I just want to finish with a few key points for everybody. Um, I want to thank the stakeholders um, who provided their views to date. Um, it's really, you know, particularly through the public forum we heard earlier, um, it's really great to see the alignment of the vision, the ambition um, um, from these groups. And it's been really also fantastic to work with yourselves, um, elected members, um, local board members um, around the workshops. And your, your input, your challenging has given us time to reflect and to improve the, the process we've, we've put together today. And um, so that to, for you all, this is not the end of the process. This is really the beginning of an exciting period of work which we're about to undertake. And uh, we'll be back in 2019 with the details of the, the programming around the City Centre Master Plan uh, consultation, and in particular, the idea or the concept to um, co-create, co-design this master plan with, with sort of council family, the group, um, campaign groups, uh, business, the community, uh, professional institutes, and Aucklanders. So um, that's really the, the thing we'd like to say. Lastly, I just wanted to um, sort of leave councillors with a really clear uh, signal. Um, in 2017, um, you, the mayor, you, the councillors asked us to, um, to be more courageous, more bold um, with our city centre master plan refresh. Um, you asked us to take a, a fresh look at Queen Street and really get into the the, the nitty-gritty around that and you've seen the recent media in the last couple of weeks uh, and maybe a month or so ago the mayor and the deputy mayor and and and, and councillor Darby talking about a city for people and uh, this has got real traction with the community the the people of Auckland are really starting to really embrace that concept so you've given us the challenge we've responded in the way that we we can um, pedestrianization of Queen Street as you've heard today is not a new issue we've proposed it at various times along the way um, it was the number one most publicly supported project in the city centre master plan in 2012. So you have the mandate from the public to, to consider this and to drive this forward. And the Watamata Local Board local plan is completely aligned and, and endorses the programme, the projects in the city centre master plan. So there's, there's good alignment. And the last thing I wanted to say really was that um, 
you know, what we're, what we're proposing here is, is regards the city centre master plan, the content that we're proposing is, is potentially transformational um, for Māori through the Kaitiaki um, Mana Whenua Forum. Um, and it's also, um, it's also completely transformational for the Grafton Gully um, because it's one of the most underperforming areas of the city centre. So, but in terms of the opportunity for um, light rail, this changes everything. And it trams up Queen Street or light rail, whatever we want to call it, is the complete paradigm shift in the way that we will move, the way we conceive mobility, access and safety in the heart of our city. Um, with regards light rail, we have a chance to, um, to reclaim our central city for and ask Queen Street Valley for people, uh, to create a safe haven for pedestrians. And as our council's remove department talked about uh, recently, with the cleanest air quality of any world city. Um, with access for everyone, um, we have a pathway to get there. And uh, the image up on the screen there, although it's kind of far away, we'll provide this image to you all. Uh, it talks about what George has described, those, those cells, those areas where the city where you will move into. But what you can see here is that whole pink area within the downtown is a chance to completely transform <coughs> the heart of our city. Hetangata, Hetangata, Hetangata. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ludo. Um, might just leave that slide and put up the motions and I'll move and the Mayor will second and we'll just have those on the screen just so that you can familiarise. And as was emailed yesterday afternoon, you can see the changes there. And I've had just a question from Member Namini to clarify one and that's been amended, Member Namini. You'll see that shortly. Um, and. Um, look, I just probably one party you've acknowledged uh, a lot of contributors to this, and the ADO has been the facilitator. I do want to acknowledge MR Cagney, uh, who the consultancy, who I think are the the, the main pen holder on doing all the the, the, the evidence based uh, work that sits in behind what we see as access for everyone. Is that a yeah, that they, they are one of the many consultants that we uh, draw upon, the allies, you know, as we call them, and um, Boffer Miskel too. And there's a whole range of groups out there, Jazmax, who there's, there's a huge army of people working on these. These are not just single ideas from one person. These are really brought together by a whole multidisciplinary set, cross-sector group. So uh, but MR Cagney have been helping us um, with this piece of work around access for everyone. But so too have Boffers and also Land Lab. So Land there's, there's quite a few of us. Okay, and no doubt Auckland Transport. So, look, I'm just, um, yeah, that's it's good, good to you. know who, who the creators are that are working with us and acknowledge all those parties as well. So thank you. So we'll take questions uh, at the outset. Uh, firstly, I've got Councillor Casey. Yeah, Ludo, I'm excited. <laughs> Very excited. I think every term I've been on Auckland Council or Auckland City Council, the idea of pedestrianisation of Queen Street has been proposed and it's ultimately been knocked back by businesses. So my question relates to that. How are you going to uh, shepherd this idea through with regard to businesses <coughs> we've heard from Viv earlier and Heart of the City? And my next question relates to how soon can we get the trials? And I'm dead pleased to see that um, resolution up there relating to trials, even though I don't know what tactical urbanism is, and I'll ask the chairman that <coughs> privately. So there you go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Great questions. I think, I mean, it'd be good to share the, share the load around. I mean, does, would any of you guys like to take Councillor Casey's uh, um, around, you know, how we're going to deal with the um, loading and all these? I mean, these are dealt with as a collective, they're all dealt at the same time, and this, the cell approach is really around dealing with that. So, um, Tim, perhaps maybe you could explain, or George, up to you. Yeah. So, I'll talk about um, uh, the timing you mentioned and tactical urbanism. Um, I think there was a um, tactical means that it's, you know, that there's, there's a strategy to it, um, you know, that it's not just. Um, quick win solutions that are random or unplanned that you're moving towards something. Uh, it does mean that you have a plan in place but it doesn't mean that um, it doesn't infer that you have to do things in the traditional way for that plan. It means that you know what direction you're moving in and that's what we have here. As soon as you know what um, direction you're moving in um, you can start to trial these things and there's been a lot of great ideas and a lot of great suggestions and, and, and we've heard this morning as well about putting this as, as part of engagement itself is actually testing things, things you can get feedback on and adjust, quick responses. So all of these tools and techniques fall into place immediately 
once you once you understand your direction you're moving in. This is this is the direction that we want to move in. This is what we're asking for approval on. Um, the, sec the first question was on um, service access. So um, part of the um, uh, I'm just going to step back for very sorry sorry just um, back to Councillor Darby's um, um, first question. This proposition wouldn't be here today without Kent Lumberg or from Emma Cagney. Um, Kent came up with this idea of how to, if we're, we're faced with the potential disruption of light rail and construction, how do we ensure that we do that in a much better way that doesn't cause a disruption that we've seen in, in, um, in our neighbouring cities? Um, this, this fundamentally says that you put in place a better servicing and access strategy before you break ground, before day one. You can have permanent better access rather than temporary traffic access. Part of the city have been involved with this um, from its inception and have told us this as well. The worst thing you can do for businesses is sudden overnight change. It's construction hoarding coming up, stuff that people can't plan to. So having progressive implementation that you can trial and test and develop with the stakeholders and put in place before you do that construction, that's, that's the strategy. Service and delivery is broken down, as George mentioned, that we have a series of consolidation zones that you, instead of having nine separate career trips to one building, that they drop off at a, at a consolidation centre, and you can use small, efficient and um, health, um, uh, clean vehicles for that last visit. And they can take nine parcels at one go to that building. Auckland Transport are all already trialling that with um, on a mission. They're, they're cycling using a depot um, in, the, in the lower um, east side of the city. Um, so uh, drop-off boxes, Amazon use that sort of thing uh, now for deliveries where people can conveniently pick up parcels <coughs> from um, deposit box. There's a number of ranges that are, of, of techniques and abilities that, that cities are using around the world. Um, once you have this um, structure in place. Just one supplementary, because you haven't mentioned it, and that's, it's not just service and delivery, it's the belief that we're going to lose customers because they can't come into town on their, in their cars. Can you address that? That's business fears of losing customers if we pedestrianise Queen Street. Well, there, there are already more people coming into downtown in the morning rush hour peak yes. by public transport than there are by private car. Uh, with CRL, it'll double the efficiency or the productivity of the entire rail network. That'll double the amount of people coming in by, by rail, building light rail, light rail. again, 300% increase in, in pedestrians. I mean, it's going to be extraordinary. It'll be a city, a, a true city for people. It'll be very difficult to drive in. You will have changed your habits by that time as well. So I think it's really, what we're trying to say here is we don't, we were trying to prevent the sort of discretionary traffic. If you have to be in the city centre, because you live, you work, that's fine. But it's about those people making the, non -dis you know, the, the discretionary trips in which they don't need to be in the downtown. And it's that particularly that issue of instead of driving through downtown, you drive around it. And it just takes the, the load off the current uh, infrastructure. Thank you. Does that answer your question? It did. Thank you, Councillor Casey. Councillor Hulse. Thank you. Yeah, I do have questions, but I, I just want to cheer loudly. And before social media lights up again with us car-hating socialists driving cars <laughs> out of Queen Street. I would challenge them to tell us when the last time they drove down Queen Street, and I think it would be Pippa Coombs, you know, sort of hoons in the 80s. I don't think anyone drives down Queen last Street. last Friday night, actually. Yeah. And I rest my case. You gave that up. So, <laughs> 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 no, you were kicking a can. <laughs> I know. It's kicking a can I down know. <laughs> you, have, you, have to, you have to excuse the West Aucklanders. I haven't driven down <laughs> Queen Street for many years. But, so my question, I've got a um, little bit like Councillor Casey, I've got three questions. The, the whole issue of the buses and where they live and this sort of ongoing bus movement, that that's still a, I don't need the great big long complicated answer, but I guess just an assurance that this is still a movable feast as we decide the zones and the movable zones. Penny, uh, uh, Daniel's here from AT, he's going to perhaps answer that as succinctly and as quickly as you can. Uh, so we, we are part of the um, investigation. Um, the bus... Uh, 
network is a challenge because uh, making the space for people and um, freeing up space for more activity on the street, but having the reliable, resilient bus network is probably the hardest part, keeping the servicing and loading going. Um, so we're working on it. We don't really have a solution. We've consolidated the bus routes into fewer corridors, which gives us more clarity on where we need to focus our effort. Um, the challenge will be working around the major dis disruptions coming from the CRL and light rail and things like that. Sometimes it's really reassuring to hear we don't have a solution because it says that this is actively being worked on and that pleases me. Secondly, all this is absolutely critical to breathing life into the city or actually allowing people to breathe full stop. Have we modelled the tonnes of CO2 that are removed from the city, not just by, you know, we're talking air quality, we're talking serious <coughs> CO2 <coughs> removal, in other words, meeting our climate change challenge, because I think this is very much part of our, our climate change plan. So if we don't have the answer, I just think it would be useful as we make each of these shifts that we have a commensurate um, carbon target along with that. So, so Rimu, uh, a, a really amazing group within the organisation, a bunch of, it's an odd name, isn't it, Rimu, but it's actually one of the smartest um, intellects in this whole organisation, if not the, the whole country. And uh, they work with us on our work on the downtown, the walking strategy, the business case for walking. Uh, they underpin a lot of the work that we do. So they're working with us alongside us on this. It's they who said, if you do this, you will create the cleanest air of any city in, in the world, not, not us, it's them. Um, I've also had an email from the NIWA team, the National um, Institute of uh, sort of um, air quality management teams, they want to partner with us on this idea. They love the idea because they believe it could be applied to the rest of the country as well. And um, so, great question, Penny. Does that answer your question? It, it kind of does. I guess, Mr Chair, I'm just really interested in us starting to seriously screw down our, yep. our targets around our um, climate change plan. I'm also really interested in the our linear park, our lovely linear park idea. Is that absolutely, totally Victoria Street, or have we looked at Wellesley Street as an option? I love the linear park idea. I'm just not totally convinced we've got the right road. So we um, have brought that um, to yourselves on, on several occasions. The the agreed proposal is is the concept of two great streets. Yeah. Uh, the linear, linear park is the preferred solution for this wonderful new. So Green Link, linking Albert Park through to Victoria Park. And uh, Wellesley Street is the uh, concept of a, a bus boulevard with generous public realm, trees, um, wonderful infrastructure for buses. So that was really what's been approved and supportive. And uh, a lot of work has been undertaken to uh, agree that um, arrangement. So um, that's where we're at currently. And we, we had a big committee meeting last, last March where we agreed that vision and set it in. Okay. Um, are supported by Always the councillors. Just prodding around the edges. Now, forgive me, Mr. Chair. This is a slightly political question. Do you agree that the <laughs> that the the work that's being done in the city centre and fabulous as it is, can benefit the southern and western communities if we work in partnership with the southern initiative and the western initiative to look at partnership opportunities? for our young people, not just for jobs, but for the ability to claim the city centre for themselves. And that that can be done, not by simply the design and where we place our streets and the pedestrianisation, but through making the city centre a place that has a heart, that's culturally welcoming, that's warm, accessible, and easily serviced by public transport. Is that what you're thinking? That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer is yes. <laughs> and can I just say, because I don't need to speak again, Mr Chair, I, I cheer this on with every fibre of my being, and the sooner we get cars like this afternoon out of High Street, which I cannot even believe that they're still there, the better. It's a very good point, uh, Councillor, but I just, the, the important thing that we have to build a better storytelling narrative across the region, and I've been talking about the story about the West, the story about the North, the South, the East, and the centre, but the centre is the heart of the whole region. It's, it's like a body. Cities work like body parts, and without a beating heart, the rest of the region doesn't survive. It needs a strong heart, but um, the importance is where the money's going. And if you, if you uh, the, the long-term plan, $28 billion is being invested into Auckland. $1 billion is in downtown. $27 billion has been invested across the wider region. So what needs to happen is you need the same conversations with that $27 million 
across the region and understanding what those do for local communities. And then once the rail comes in, as Mr. As to, um, talked about earlier about the, the young boy, the Māori boy, in the, in kicking in a can down the street, at the moment he cannot access the city centre and, and the city centre can't be accessed the other way. It's, it's, it works, it goes back and forth. And without the light rail, without the rail, without the new public transport, people are left isolated. And um, transport is the best way to unlock accessibility. Thank you. Councillor Clough. Uh, tremendous. Just need to keep on cracking on with it. It's um, no, very exciting. Just a definition, and it maybe it's been given, but it wasn't mentioned. Delivery lockers. What are delivery lockers? Is that what yep. you were referring to before? Sure, do you want to take that one? Okay. Uh, delivery lockers are a concept widely used uh, in, in, in other cities. Uh, it, it's, the, it's the same basic concept as a post office box, but located in a wider variety of locations and in different sizes um, for receiving deliveries from any, from, from any supplier at all, um, trade me, uh, parcels, um, and, 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 and such like. The, the, the idea being that one can locate them in accessible spots near public transport nodes, places that are easily accessible, so that it's much more straightforward for, say, a person living in the city centre who um, needs to accept a delivery, who does not have to spend half a day at home waiting for the uh, delivery, okay. but can instruct the um, delivery to go to the locker and collect at their convenience. So it's more for individuals, um, not, not for, for retail shops. <coughs> It, it, it could be. Could be. Okay. could be both. Okay. could be all. all right. Yeah. And if I could add, I think uh, worldwide they've become, a unlike a post office box, they're now a dynamic. So you'd be told to go to a box and you'd be given the code to unlock that box, but it could be mine next time. So they're yeah, not, no, no, I'm just thinking of ca courier deliveries, etc. Um, and just Grafton Gully, because you're all quite young up there, and none of you probably realise Grafton Gully was just beautiful native bush. Mm -hmm and was just totally destroyed, totally wiped out. They, I mean, they didn't need to do it, but they did it. Um, have you had any thoughts? I mean, did you know that? I suppose that's yeah, partly a absolutely. question. And then have you got, it doesn't say anything there about trying to re-green that whole gully, especially further up, because that used to be an important green lungs of the city, actually. I mean, you had Queen Street developed and Grafton Gully was bush. So the, so yeah. the um, concept takes into, there are two streams down there, um, Awa, the um, uh, Waipaururu and, and, and Waipapa. Yeah. Um, they, they follow the line of, of, um, of, of, of the road, which actually follows also the um, old foreshore, foreshore line. Um, and the, um, the avenue of um, trees down there is specifically um, tied to that concept as well and, and, and providing... Um, um, habitat and um, and uh, places for um, migrating um, birds to to feed. So um, yes, that's it's part of the concept. It's part of an emerging uh, um, outcome that we're working with um, Kaitiaki Forum on. The um, just to add to that, Ross, the 2012 master plan um, proposed a capping of the gully. Uh, a, a land bridge across linking the domain through to the university precinct because at the moment you, you can't even walk between the domain and our city centre and uh, that is a very ambitious project we feel that it's still doable but it requires above ground private investment um, the university to really play a, a partnership role in that so what we're doing is being a bit more perhaps a bit more ground based around this proposal is to resurrect a better street pattern down at the Grafton yep. Gully end, yep. the, the, the northern end of that gully. But there were 11,000 homes that were, were, were forcibly removed to deliver uh, the, the CMJ. Function. But what I think Auckland has got to do is stop making those, those wrong decisions. They're not smart decisions. But what we are doing now is thinking, how do you use a, an asset that is there to, um, to better that asset and to improve it. We've done that with Light Path, and we think we can repurpose these assets to benefit the city rather than the, the reverse. So thank you, it's a good, good point. Thank you. Member Henry. Um, with regards to uh, Māori outcomes, um, I suppose 
suppose I might be um, be accused of sounding like a, a broken record, but we're in Māori outcomes uh, uh, is Mātawaka. Well, Tim, do you want to take the take sure. that question? So, um, uh, we're early days in the process, so we're developing, well, we're, we're assisting with um, mana whenua with the, uh, their own, the, the outcomes plan, the kaitiaki outcomes is their plan, it's not ours, and then from there the process is that we negotiate with them what goes into um, the city centre master plan. What does that mean, negotiate, just means that we need to take into other considerations. At the time of um, writing those um, terms of reference, there were 17 iwi in the, um, in the forum, there are now 19. Um, that allowed space for us to um, uh, consider and, and, um, and um, partner with, uh, um, with all iwi, and also with um, Mata Waka as well. So those considerations need to come, and that's why there is a, a, there is in the, um, there is in the process this translation um, and um, further engagement before it goes into the, into the master plan. Okay, well you sort of, you, you, you sort of around about um, address the question. Would it, would it be better if, um, uh, I suppose, un, uh, as, a, as a, a subsection of Māori outcomes, um, there'd be a, a heading Mana Whenua outcomes and Mātāwaka outcomes, and 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 the IMSB would be would, would be willing to uh, sit down in the new year and and and, and come up with uh, some agreed um, um, sort of terms for Mātāwaka. You know, I mean, I mean, now uh, you know what Mātāwaka is. I know what Mātāwaka is. Um, but 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 the concerns and the engagement, um, we we never get there. We're just getting to um, mana whenua uh, engagement. Um, I'd be 160 by the time um, we get around to Matawaka. So I want to be able to you know um, um, hurry the process up so I don't die before um, it happens. <laughs> You don't kick the can. I know you don't. No, no, don't yeah, say yeah, the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> the bucket. <laughs> well, we, we'd be honoured to work alongside Matawaka, but we would need advice and steerage from yourselves and, and uh, IMSB board members, Brandy and David and the team, and we'll work that through. Uh, but we are looking to that Kaitiaki Forum to provide us with, with guidance don't, don't around the don't process. Don't get the Kaitiaki Forum to tell you about Matawaka. Okay. We'll do that. Okay, well... Mataka, Matawaka will tell you. Kapai, we'll do I it. I trust these iwi fellas. <laughs> um, that, that, that was one of my two or three questions, was just exploring the Māori uh, outcomes work stream here. So this is work to yet occur, um, and, and those inputs have been recommended. I guess... For me, I, there's a lot of opportunity. This is where you differentiate Auckland from just any other cool city. Uh, this is not just an overlay. This is something that's, that's got to be real, genuine, and integrated. And so my question is probably, I guess it's posed for your work stream going ahead, is how do you avoid this being just clip-on korus? And how does it represent um, the, the spiritual values of Māori being seen in daily life? I think this has the opportunity to go really deeply. So but that is my question. How do you avoid it being the patch on Māori koru? By doing it properly. <laughs> okay, so it's not about... It's, it's about um, outcomes. Um, so we start off with, um, with, with mana whenua, and it's, what, it's, it's partnering and um, working with them, not telling them. It's not about patterning. It's not about, it's not about um, Māori art, nor, nor is it about um, Māori design. It's actually about um, if we have, uh, in our policy statements, the Auckland plan, we have um, identified um, 
the outcomes or the, sorry the uh, objectives that we want to achieve but if, if you look at what the 2012 master plan does it's a very uh, workable document that says how do you take ideas into reality how do you get things and put a, a, a stake in the ground and actually um, get them vying for budget and get them as tangible um, uh, outcomes and that's what we're working on we need to define what those are but what it means is more about creating space for uh, for cultural practice than it does about um, adorning things. It's not it doesn't exclude art and expression, but it's about giving space for um, customary practice. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, um, sorry, um, okay. do you have another question on this one? I'll look. I'll allow if you've got a question I, on this one. Oh, um, or do you want to make a statement later on? I'll make a statement later on. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> But I'd like to say it to George. Oh. You can. You say, it, say it now. When are you going to start your pronunciation course? <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, um, I tell you, um, like I said, I'm getting on and on in years. And I don't think that I should have to turn up to a meeting and hear... Can I just... I totally respect you. Yes, yes you... Yeah, I, I know you I just say George has only been in the country nine months. He's trying harder than... Yeah. George, 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 and, George and my team... Um, um, that's actually... Actually, Mr Chair, that ain't an excuse. George, George... You, 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 can I speak? I am going to rule that... I'm going to rule that out of order. Out of order. Oh, well, and rule I, the language out of order because I'm, oh, I'm not, not going to sit here and have to listen no, to it. No. You know, you know what it does to my ears? Order. It may not to I'm yours, calling, but it does to mine. No, I'm Chair, calling order. No, yeah. Ludo, I do not need a reply. Go on, Ludo. No, I do not no. need a reply. Um, it's not fair, Todd. It's not staff fair. have joined us We're from all around the stuff. world, and they have different accents, exactly. and they are embracing our, our Māori, our te reo. Our? They are, and we say we are an inclusive Auckland. Let's keep we are an inclusive Auckland top of mind. And let's carry on now. My second question, Ludo, going forward with the, the rolling program of, of um, reviews, I want to get a sense of how we do this beyond the ADO and embrace... We've got 70,000 students here. I don't get a sense that the students uh, are showing up in the city centre. I don't get a sense that the universities are showing up. I don't get a sense of all the brilliant people with their brilliant ideas that are being incubated as we beaver away on our work that they're showing up. So what, how do we create room in this review of those three work streams and then the subsequent reviews, how do we create a thought process for including people in the generation of ideas working through their ideas, testing them, and having them become our ideas that are then in plan and hopefully get a project budget uh, attached to them in the future. I'll, I'll let Chris, I think I'll let Tim answer this one. He's, he's very deep into this, this idea and this, this dream that we, we co-created. I'll just have a first go at that. Anyway, look, um, we've, we've just talked about um, uh, Māori outcomes and the genesis of that is, um, is comes from... Um, um, from Māori first. Um, Grafton Gully, you've heard that today. That idea, it's not us coming up with the idea to impose it. In fact, the genesis of uh, the idea came from a public forum. It was, a, it was from Transport Blog. So it is an idea from public that had value, that had interests, that we started working with those people on to generate. So it has come from the public, that idea. Um, and um, access for everyone, as you saw, this morning is uh, a coordination of residence groups, of um, hearts of the city, of business interests, of um, six or seven different transport, um, Auckland transport um, uh, managers in terms of different outcomes they're trying to achieve. We've talked to um, its ideas from um, property developers for residential mansions. Conrad Properties are part of our, our group, University of Auckland, um, Sky City. Um, these are all our stakeholders that are developing these ideas and needs. So um, uh, it's th 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 these already capture a, 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 a broad range of, of inputs. Gen Zero are part of this reference group. 
Okay, and look, third question, and just briefly, just trials, um, interventions, tactical urbanism, uh, which is just a, your, your language, it's planning language, uh, urban design language for just doing things to create a better place, tr testing some of those ideas. Do we have the resources right now? Can we, can we do some of the, those things <coughs> more urgently? Could we not just create a trials program, but some more urgency to implementing and testing some of those ideas? Well, well we have uh, resources across the organisation. It's a matter of uh, a clear directive from... We don't have them in our department. We uh, don't have the resources to manage a whole programme of, of uh, urban tactical urbanism. And, and your, your request of Auckland Transport, uh, Councillor, is really important because it, it requires a a tactical urbanism program for the whole region. This is not about just downtown, it's about the lessons we learn in downtown, how they could be applied across the region. So there are people across the organisation, it just requires us to uh, coordinate that and to but have the mandate to do so um, in a coordinated program. Um, with regards to the downtown program, um, you know, uh, Patrick talked earlier, I mean, you could tactical urbanism a bus route up Queen Street which can play the part of a light rail or tram system that could be done before you dig up and these are the things that we would like to bring back to you as a series of, of project trials where we would do that so those are planned those are programmed those are endorsed by yourselves because we can't do anything without the support of AT they are the road controlling authority I am not we have to ask their permission to do all these things you know, that's why things take a lot longer here than they should. There's just a lot of pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Um, but they are really on board with this plan. We've been to their executive team. Shane has is, is got a new agenda with his team, and we're excited to work with him. Uh, Daniel has been charged by um, Dean Kimpton and by Shane and Cynthia to drive a program of tactical um, initiatives that she came through your request and through uh, the SOI process. Um, so, yeah, we'd like to put that forward as part of the consultation process to you as, as councillors for your endorsement. Okay. Uh, the other part of the, of the question is something called guerrilla urbanism, not guerrilla as in uh, monkey, but as in tactical but community driven. And you know, these are, this is what happens all around the world where people just decide to lay a red carpet for pedestrians to cross a road and they take control of their city. And I think a nice blend of those two approaches would be just awesome here. Okay. I've got uh, lots of questions, so I should have been a lot briefer. Meg off. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, you've actually started the answer to the question, the first question I had, and that was to describe the degree of collaboration between ADO and the, the CCOs, particularly AT and AT. AT, it's obvious why you need to collaborate with them. Are there any difficulties with that? Um, uh, is, is that process quite intensive? And AT, it's part of Auckland being a, a, a destination, not a, uh, a gateway or a through route, as, uh, as it might be applied to what we want to do downtown. So, yeah, gen general collaboration with the other CCOs. How's it going? How's it, is it going? What sort of... Are, are there problems that you, you're confronting with that? Well, there were... It's been challenging um, over the last six years, actually, Mayor Phil. Um, you know, really difficult at times. You know, last Christmas or last March, we were here. Uh, we're bringing you the, the uh, Linear Park project, which was being challenged, I suppose, by our, our own organisation. With your support, with Councillor Darby, Mr Hills, and everybody around this table, we got that back on track. So you know, your role in that is critical. Um, there's been a real sea change, in my opinion, in the last six months, the way in which Shane and the team want to engage with us. Um, that's not going to change the world suddenly, but we are working with them closely. They asked us to come to their executive team to present this proposal, and their answer was this solves a lot of the problems, a lot of questions we were wondering how to solve. Um, A4E solves a lot of their issues around loading, um, how to deliver better parking for the city, loading issues, emergency services. These are things that, that they think about, and the access for everyone that, that my team and, and Cag Cagney team have come up with is, solves a lot of those. So look, it's not perfect, and uh, this is just the downtown, but um, even Penny Hulse uh, recently asked my team to have a look at the Lincoln Road project and um, asked us to have a little bit of a review around how that could be done better, and we presented that to AT last week to Mark Lambert's team, and they said, yeah, 
this makes a lot of sense. We could do this a lot better. So there's some really good things that, that get driven really by the way you guys operate, and, and Linda's been really part of that too. So if it comes from the top, things happen because um, it's really hard to collaborate all the time. It's, it's, it's exhausting. And sometimes you need to push these things a bit hard, but it's exciting and we've got them on board. Daniel's alongside us today, and we don't agree on everything, do we? But, you know, we, that's, that's, the, that's the secret of, of, of people. We don't agree on everything. So thank you for the question. Uh, second question, Mr Chairman, is just about the, the concept of trialling the open streets. And, you know, we had parking day a couple of months ago, and... I went out and visited the various sites and, you know, it was quite a lot of fun, but I, I, I like the idea, I don't know whether it was George or Tim that mentioned it, you know, that we need progressive implementation and trials. What have you got planned um, over the next 12 months, not only for the city centre, but maybe for some of the suburban areas uh, in terms of open streets? And what do you need to do to get those trials? You know, we've done it before, but, but obviously if we're talking about pedestrianising, uh, let, let's give it a go, let's see how people react, let's work out what the problems might be. What have you got planned in the next, uh, say, 12-month period on that? Well, this is a big complicated um, issue. What I would say, Mayor Phil, is that there's a lot of things happening already, and I think there's a lot of things that the organisation, that the council family are doing. Uh, there's a whole range of groups, whether it be AT or community in the community empowerment unit, are doing things all the time. We're just not so good at hearing about this stuff. So there's a whole range of projects that are underway. Um, next weekend, for instance, we have uh, Santa Parade, where we close the city, but we open it back up to cars as soon as Santa's disappears. We should just keep it closed for a, a few days, but we need AT to do that. And so we, there are opportunities every week, every month for these things to be done. So I think what I'd like to propose to you is that we bring back to you a program, a regional program and a city centre program over the next six months where we outline to you and your councillors, these are the projects we propose are going to happen. These are the funded projects. These are the unfunded ones. And um, put that together as a, as a comprehensive package because it's not just us. It's not just AT. It's, it's a whole bunch of us. And that's the challenge of the super city. It's lots of pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. So would that be satisfactory if we brought back to this committee a, a program that was deliverable within the next year? Yeah, I, I think that would be a very good idea. Um, the, the last question I've got is really the time frame for this. Uh, we know that... Um, city Rail Link, or we hope that the City Rail Link is going to deliver in 2024. Uh, light Rail may be anything in the mid-2020s, depending on whether it's done in, in phases. When, when do you imagine that these major projects for pedestrianisation might, uh, might be brought into effect? How long would we wait? Um, obviously, you could run the buses up instead of the, 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 uh, the, the light rail, as you mentioned before, but you know, if you're going to dig up Queen Street, that's the time you make the permanent change. Yeah. What do you see as the time frame for the major pedestrianisation around the city? Well, we're working on a, a proposition or an assumption that um, we wouldn't do any major um, dig on Queen Street before America's Cup. It just would be not sensible to add that to the jigsaw puzzle. It probably could have worked a year ago, but it's, it's still not even... The business case hasn't even... Um, been completed yet. It's close to, and um, Jim is actually on the, uh, the joint executives group around that. Um, but actually, we're looking at the new year, the business case being approved, and then it's really the government's decision whether they want to push the green button. But we are, we are proposing or we're assuming that they would start from Mangari, you know, that other way first, uh, Mangari to Mount Roskill first, rather than the city centre first. Uh, I'm because not we sure just about that. That's, uh, um, okay. Yeah. So no, we're no, just those are the assumptions, but we're not. Someone else's detail. Yeah. We're not um, over the details of that, but we are suggesting that we wouldn't do a major dig on Queen Street. But what we're saying, what Tim is and the team have come up with, is a, a, a plan of how you would prepare the city for that dig. So two years before you start digging, you would have the new network in place, the new road layouts, the new pedestrian. Um, you'd have some of these um, changing room facilities. You'd have new parking facilities. That would be in place before you dug the first uh, sort of stick in the ground. So, um, but it's all up to you, really, as well. There's money in the budget to do various things. It depends on what you want done. You know, whether we tackle High Street, that money is in the budget, but it's not in the budget in the next three years. It's, out, it's been pushed out. 
you know, that's a conversation you'd have to have with um, the heart of the city and the city centre advisory board, which um, kind of governs that money. But there is there are things that we could we could do at your request. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Now I've got um, questions from ten members um, in front of me here. Mine's not a question. I'm, mine's I'm, for the speaker. I'm aware order. of the time. Um, would you like to take a five-minute break now? Yeah, I do. I think we just take a yep. five-minute break now. Thank you. So we'll stand adjourned Strictly and come back for questions.